So this video is about the power system of the laser. So this is what came in the box, um, other than of course the laser cutter, but that is way too big to fit in the shot. Um, suffice to say the laser power supply is a 220 volt power supply and um, this is a 220 volt air compressor, this is a 220 volt water pump, um, and I live in the US and we use 110 volts. Now, I was a little panicky about that when I first got the stuff until I realized that this bizarre box with essentially no English on it other than the V for volts, but that's more standard than English, um, must be a transformer, right? That must be primary, that must be secondary, uh, that must be frequency, and then this is going to be amperage. It doesn't say whether this is input or output amperage, but given that it's quote-unquote 1000 VA at 220 volts, it's probably output. So, um, Dave Jones is famous for saying, don't turn it on, take it apart. And for any power electronics you get in from China, that's doubly true. So we're going to take this apart. I'm not going to take these apart right now. I'm actually, I've already got a replacement for the water pump, so that is going to go away. And by the way, this claims it's 1,200 liters per hour. So that is an interesting fact that will come into play later. Uh, the air compressor, um, I'm just going to run on 200 volts for now. I might replace it later, um, so we'll see. But let's take a look at the inside of the transformer. This is, first of all, it's not grounded, which is aw awesome, I guess, being sarcastic. Um, there's no CE or UL label anywhere on it. Not that it would mean anything if there was. They are kind of famous for faking those. So taking it apart, we can see that... Let's see, let's get some light in here. Oh yeah, that's the money shot right there. Okay, wow. So, first of all... This is some of the most shameful input cabling I've ever seen. It feels like um, like RJ45 cable on the uh, jacket. So it, you, can, you can feel that it's just really, really cheap cable. It's super, super thin. I think this is got to be 20 wire gauge, something in that neighborhood. Going to a really cheap switch. There's no insulation on anything, no shrink wrap, nothing, no crimped, it's just soldered on. Um, the indicator LED is wired up to the 200 volt side. It's got a series resistor in there, I mean who cares what its value is. And then that's all you sort of got for the for the LED. It came almost immediately out of the tubing that it went into. There's no fuse there's no protection circuitry. Um, the, the box is rusted. I'm not going to plug this into my wall. Bottom line. Not only that, so it's also got these weird... Everything on the laser comes with these plugs. Um, so it handles, it looks like, uh, is that UK or Irish? And then um, regular spade plugs. So anyways, this is going to go in the junk bin. Now I cheated. I've, I've opened this up before. And I knew that that was going to be unacceptable. And so I went ahead and ordered another model from Amazon. Which is this one. Um, it's, as you can see, much, much bigger. It is rated for the same amount of current still made in China. This one claims that it's CE certified, but we're going to open it up anyway and see.
Okay, now there's a lot more going on in this one. A lot, lot more. So first of all, this one has a input power selection block. Um, it uses it's a spade shunt, um, and I set it to 110. There's the uh, good old CE mark that may very well be a complete lie. But it's still pretty reasonable. Um, it has a input fuse. That is... Ten amps, two hundred and fifty volts. So it'll actually end up being a fair overload. Well, at one hundred and ten volts at ten amps, we're getting close to its one um, kilowatt rating. So that's actually, I guess, fairly reasonable. Although fuses below usually higher amperage than they're rated for. Uh, these wires are nominally insulated with heat shrink, although the heat shrink doesn't appear to actually be shrunk. This is totally uninsulated. It goes from the input power. We have our earth lead that goes No, it's not Earth, sorry. Our Earth lead goes to the Earth of the two receptacles and to the chassis. Then our neutral goes to the outputs. And the hot goes through this switch here, which is also a breaker, but it's a 400 amp breaker, so I don't really know what the purpose of that is. And then it comes out of the breaker, goes into the fuse. From the fuse, it goes into the selection block, and then it goes off into two, three, four taps into the transformer. And Two of the the settings here, the 110 volt setting, gets shorted off to the 110 output plug, and then the 220 wire gets shorted off in the 220 output plug. So that's pretty smart, I guess. If you're using 110 or 220, on the front it has 110 or 220 outputs, and so it just shorts them across. It doesn't even go through the transformer, and it wouldn't. That that doesn't make sense. Although if you're trying to use this as an isolation transformer, it's not going to work for you. This transformer is much, much larger. <coughs> the Chinese one had this little toroidal, which is fine, but I don't know. Who knows how well that's made. Um, obviously, I'm not going to tear apart the transformer, and I wouldn't really know what I'd be looking for anyways. This one has kind of a gimmicky feature that I'm not totally sure I, I love or care about, and it's got a 5-volt charger, whatever, at the output. And that's made as a little stepping converter, it looks like. So that's that. Oh, the outputs are also, at least the 110 output is, they attempted to heat shrink it. They didn't bother on the 220. I don't know if you can see that. The 220 is also essentially uninsulated. But even still, the build quality is far and away better than the Chinese one. And this one I'm comfortable plugging into my wall. And that's the idea. Thanks.